Number 10, The Spectre. Let's start off with a different type of immortality, one coming from a character who was never mortal to begin with. Kinda. The Spectre first appeared in More Fun Comics number 52 back in 1940. Now the Spectre because of this dates all the way back to the Golden Age. At first the Spectre was Jim Corrigan, a man whose soul was denied entry into the afterlife by a being known as The Voice, and is instead sent back to fight evil. This however was after he was murdered. He would create a costume and call himself the Spectre. However, the version fans would become more familiar with and who would become the more iconic was the Silver Age version, which would tweak the Spectre to a spirit of vengeance, who would possess hosts and have them act as a vessel for delivering his brutal brand of justice. This way you could still also have the Jim Corrigan backstory, but the Spectre could also possess other characters, like for example Hal Jordan. He was the Spectre after he snapped and killed the entire Green Lantern Corps in Sinestro. But it's fine, it was parallax. I mean, you'd think a cosmic being would know that, but it doesn't matter, except the retcon, so no one has to feel bad. The Spectre has waned in popularity in the modern era and isn't seen anywhere near as much as he used to be. And at 9, Batman. Batman isn't really immortal. He's a regular guy who has insane martial arts skills and he's the world's greatest detective, but he's been around since 1939. That's. 80 years. And while it may be a long time for the bat, he's still looking good for his age, even though he should be looking like Bruce Wayne from the CW Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover. First appearing in Detective Comics number 27, Batman may not be your typical version of Immortal, but it's 100% sure that under no circumstance will Batman ever be killed off. Permanently, I should say. Unless it's an alternate version of him and not the main one that is bringing in the major bucks. Major bucks? The only way they would kill off Batman is if they needed the publicity or if everyone stopped reading, but nobody's gonna stop reading Batman. He's He's immortal because he brings in a huge amount of money. He's got like that protagonist armor, like the solid armor at that. Number 8, The Hulk. The Hulk is currently at the time of this recording in a comic called The Immortal Hulk. And it means what it says, the Hulk is immortal. And this isn't the only time he has been depicted as such. In the very depressing storyline The End, he was shown to be the last person on Earth utterly alone after his counterpart Bruce Banner died. Hulk is loneliness there is. In the Immortal Hulk, Banner cannot die properly and instead is dragged back to life by the Hulk if his form is killed. The transformations in this comic are depicted as monstrous and Cronenberg-esque. And the punishment the Hulk can take is immense, such as having his whole body cut up and separated into jars. This is while his mind stays intact and he can just watch what's happening to him. There are some truly horrifying prospects attached to proper immortality. The run started off as a really solid horror and then kind of started diving into multiple personalities and a companion who wanted to be the Hulk because he was allowed to be angry. Mm, remember when the Hulk was sent to space? How about his friends and allies and how they fear him and never really trust him? How about how he lives life drifting from place to place? How he's a danger to people that love him? The right to be angry. Okay. Coming in at number seven, we have Ben Grimm, aka The Thing. As the physically strongest member of the Fantastic Four, with an intimidating appearance to boot, the Thing is respected throughout the Marvel world for always having his family's back, and even being capable of standing up to someone as powerful as the Hulk when the need arises. Ben's change into a being made out of a mysterious rock-like substance also had some unexpected side effects, however, such as the fact that while in Thing form, he never ages. This is offset slightly by the fact that Ben is capable of appearing human for one day a year due to the tinkering of the rest of the Fantastic Four, but aging only one day a year extends your lifespan dramatically, and combine that with all of the near-death situations or universal collapses that the Fantastic Four have avoided together, and Ben Grimm definitely earns the title of being practically immortal. Number 6, Hercules. Hercules plays a decently large role in the Marvel Universe. He debuted in Journey into Mystery Annual Number 1 back in 1965, but that's because his first appearance in Avengers Forever was later said to be that of an imposter. Hercules here is immortal because he is an Olympian god in this continuity, and thus gets all the perks. No being a doorman for him. Now Hercules had a fake out death fairly recently at the time of this recording, where it looked as though the universe he was fighting in had ceased to exist, been destroyed. However, Amadeus Cho was able to discover that he was in fact still alive. Hercules is a good friend and rival to Thor, you know, like an anime. Hercules has also sacrificed his powers only to have them mysteriously return. Why? Who knows? Phantom Stranger. I know, different companies. 
Although now there may be a reason. That's what retcons are for. Number five. While Wonder Woman has always been semi-immortal, as of her new 52 relaunch, she's actually been fully immortal. And considering she was impressively strong before that, adding the powers of superhuman speed, accelerated healing, and flight pretty much clinched her being on this list. Heck, she's even gained the powers of Ares the God of War, so add that to her ever-growing list. And let's face it, with Gal Gadot being her new face, how can you not love her? Number 4. Wonder Woman Wonder Woman is an interesting case, because no matter the origin, there is always at least implications, if not the downright statement, that she is immortal. Be she made of clay or the daughter of Zeus. Indeed, for a time, all Amazons in Paradise Island, later renamed Themyscira, were said to be immortal. Diana is a goddess and a warrior, and a compassionate leader, walking an intriguing balance of kindness and pragmatism. That is hard for all writers to capture. And of course, she is a staple in some of those it's a dystopian future but one woman is still here stories. This is part of why some fans love pairing her with Superman. As while it varies, he is definitely more long-lived than most mortals. Coming in at number three, we have the notoriously durable Wolverine. When Wolverine was first introduced in the comics, his healing ability was just a quirk that made him a more intimidating warrior. Any cuts or bruises would just quickly become a non-issue to him. But as time went on and Wolverine became a more popular character, his healing abilities as a mutant became one of his most defining features, even more so than his iconic claws. Wolverine's healing abilities, combined with his indestructible adamantium skeleton, have been shown to be so great over the years that he's even been able to withstand the full force of a nuclear bomb, and getting his entire body ripped in half by the Ultimate Hulk. Even in the few instances where someone has been able to officially kill Wolverine, he's somehow found his way back to the land of the living through time travel or magical means, ensuring that Wolverine will live on to fight another day. Number two, the Sentry. The Sentry is immortal. Don't ask how, they explain it, but just let it be. He took a serum that places molecules a second or two ahead in time. This activated a photosynthetic Superman style response, which allowed him to store energy and power himself immortal. No matter how it came about, the Sentry is immortal, and that is part of what makes him or made him so dangerous for a long time. At least in terms of the Sentry's existence, which only dates back to 2000. He was two entities, both the Sentry and the Void, who was a dark mirror to the Sentry. So if he existed forever, so too did the Void. It was part of why the Marvel Universe was made to forget about him, which was the crux of his retconned in origin story. At the time of this recording, his two halves have fused, reconciled. Where does it have to go from there? We shall see. And in at number one, Dr. Manhattan. John Osterman's whole life changed after the accident that transformed him into Dr. Manhattan. He was the Watchmen universe's only superpowered man, a being of pure energy who recreated himself outside of time and space and changed everything. Dr. Manhattan has only grown more and more distant from people and the world, largely because he can exist outside of time, seeing all of it simultaneously. He is completely immortal and omnipotent. And of course, there was Doomsday Clock, which brought the Watchmen and DC universes into proper contact with each other, and which essentially concluded with there's gonna be more timelines and crises and a crossover. 100% worth a wait of two years. Not salty at all. Sam Guthrie, aka Cannonball, has been both an X-Man and an Avenger, and due to his apparent status as an external, is believed to be immortal. His powers are based around the ability to generate thermochemical energy and release it from his skin, then using that energy to propel his body through the air at fantastic speeds, effectively making him, as his name states, a human cannonball. Compared to the rest of this list, he is definitely lacking in the variety of powers department, but really. Any superhero with immortality is going to be an asset, and I'd be happy to have him in my corner. Number 9. Thor is only borderline immortal, since he can be killed by Ragnarok. That said, it's not permanent because of the cycle of rebirth, and it's also a comic and he's not Ben Parker, so Thor will always be back. At least, that's what it appears to be anyway. Regardless, Thor's powers are well known, especially given his prolific role in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But let's take a quick look at those. Obviously, we have superhuman strength, speed, durability, and as long as he's eating the golden apples, stay in his physical prime. And with Mjolnir, he possesses dimensional transportation, a form of flight, and weather manipulation. And that's more than enough for me to say he's worthy of being on this list. Number 8. I am going to call this one potentially immortal, simply because while he can and die, he's also been seen living 800 years in the future in the X4 slash Cable one-shot Messiah War, so seemingly, as long as no one kills Deadpool, he'll keep living. And given this character has or should have been killed more times than I can count, 
killing him doesn't seem to be enough to stop him from coming back. So I'm gonna go ahead and add him to this list. In at number seven, the Phantom Stranger. This is another cosmic entity, and this one with no origin by design. Who is the Phantom Stranger? No one knows. The Phantom Stranger first debuted in Phantom Stranger number one, all the way back in 1952. Who is he? Well, he is a mysterious figure who just kinda shows up when he is needed. Sometimes, not all the time. He also has abilities that can do what is needed, most of the time. And of course, he is vague and cryptic, for sometimes not even he knows why he was drawn to an event. Because of how vague all of this was, not only has the Phantom Stranger been depicted very differently depending upon the writer, but he never really caught on too well. It's hard to get attached to a mystery person who shows up sometimes cuz. He did show up that one memorable issue though where Superman became a marine vampire. Never forget. Phantom Stranger. Just cuz. Number 6. Artemis is actually a fairly new character, not to be confused with Artemis Croc. This fully known as Artemis of Banna Migdal is an Amazon who left to recover the Bow of Ra, and became an ally of Red Hood and Bizarro in the process. Much like Wonder Woman, Artemis is immortal thanks to being a child of Hera, although she can be killed in battle. She basically has the same base set of powers that Wonder Woman possesses, superhuman strength, agility, stamina, durability. So if Wonder Woman can make the cut on this list, I'd say Artemis is definitely worthy. Speaking of which… Coming in at number 5, we have Kevin Connor, aka Starbrand. Taking his name from the literal star brand he possesses, Kevin is one of the most powerful heroes to ever be called an Avenger gaining his powers during an Earth-wide cosmic flash known as the White Event. Gaining the ability to control and manipulate energy at a scale only limited by his imagination, Starbrand is incredibly physically powerful and capable of healing any wound on both himself or any of his allies. Starbrand is so powerful that he's one of the few beings to ever kill a Beyonder, destroying one of the multiversal beings when the Marvel Universe was collapsing in a massive explosion, yet somehow reappearing unharmed once the Marvel Universe was restored. And if you can heal from an explosion at the end of all existence, I think you might be able to survive pretty much anything. Number 4. The Phantom Stranger is an interesting immortal, specifically in that he doesn't even seem to be killable. The guy has had his heart removed and still didn't die. His origins are as of yet unknown, but several stories have circulated, including that he's a fallen angel who chose no side between heaven and hell, and thus must walk the earth for all eternity. Another states that he is a citizen of another universe, who at the end of the previous universe passed over to the new universe. That's uh, that's actually really interesting. This might be just me, but I've always loved fictionized biblical characters. Anyway. Phantom Stranger's powers include dimensional travel, Eldritch Blast, Spectral Sight, Illusion Casting, Oneromancy, and Reality Manipulation, just to name a few. So this guy's kind of amazing, and his only real limitation is his inability to directly intervene with, well, anything. Which kind of makes him sound like, well, some might say, God. Number 3. Hulk Hulk is definitely one of the most powerful heroes around in Marvel Comics. Often he is well known for his massive amount of strength and ability to smash or destroy just about anything he sets his mind to wrecking. Lately however, we saw a deep dive into the character of the Hulk and Bruce Banner, who are also often described as being two separate beings, kind of sharing one existence. In Immortal Hulk we also learn not only that Hulk is extremely complex, but also that he's well, you may have guessed it, immortal. Granted, this very revelation was something pulled from his original origin, where it was initially explained that at night the Hulk would basically take over and because of this, whenever night fell, if Bruce Banner had been killed, then Hulk would be resurrected, bringing Bruce back with him. If you are a Hulk fan and you haven't yet read Immortal Hulk by the way, it's definitely a must read, so go do that. And you'll see what I'm talking about with all this immortal stuff. If you didn't already know, because I feel like, you know, if you've been a Hulk fan for a long time, then you probably were like, I mean, it makes sense. Number 2. Yeah, the fact that the Phoenix Force has ever been stopped is amazing to me. I mean, the Phoenix Force is an ancient cosmic entity that represents life that has not yet been born, and the forces of creation and destruction. It's immortal, and was born of the void between states of being. Its very birth just sounds like a god. In addition, it is the nexus of all psionic energy in all realities of the Omniverse, and is among the most feared beings in the entire universe, and is able to cut and regrow any part of the universe, as well as destroy it entirely. And given the alias this has had over the years, the World Destroyer, the end of all that is, the Big Bang, Chaos Bringer, and Ravager of Worlds, I think it's safe to say that this immortal cosmic entity's strength is pretty boundless. Now if they could just make a good movie about it. 
Number one. I'm surprised I don't hear more about the Sentry. So, the Sentry was originally named Robert Reynolds, a middle aged man who obtained his power from a special serum he took as a boy. The result was he obtained immeasurable power, but another being came to be known as the Void. The Void turned out to be Robert's other half, and as long as the other exists, the other can never die. They will always come back. And in the most recent volume of Sentry from 2018, the Void and Robert have finally merged together, becoming whole once again and possessing power greater than they ever had while separate. Which was already pretty much off the charts. So who knows how powerful this guy is now. That said, an immortal being who can't be stopped by a team of Avengers? Gotta give it to them. That is power. Coming in at number 10, we have Steve Rogers, aka Captain America. One of America's very first superheroes in the Marvel Universe during the Second World War, Steve Roger is notorious for dodging certain death after surviving his plane crashing into the frozen Atlantic Ocean through suspended animation. Even since becoming a modern hero, however, Cap still can't seem to stay dead, with the occasion where he seemed to be assassinated by crossbones actually resulting in his consciousness traveling through time. An inconvenient misadventure, but certainly less permanent than death. And given the fact that the Super Soldier Serum also seems to at least drastically slow Steve's aging, and Captain America just might be more immortal than you'd think. Coming in at number 9, we have Alec Holland, aka The Swamp Thing. The being that now calls itself Alec Holland is in reality the Avatar of the Green, an immortal being dedicated to protecting all nature and plant life on planet Earth that absorbed the memories and consciousness of a man named Alec Holland after a tragic chemical explosion in the swamps of Louisiana. As long as there exists some form of plant life on Earth, the Swamp Thing can regrow his body from this plant and transfer his consciousness, essentially ensuring that there'll always be an Avatar of the Green protecting Earth and that the memory of Alec Holland will truly never ever die. Coming in at number 8, we have Jean Grey, aka the Dark Phoenix. An X-Men storyline and character turn so iconic that they've tried turning it into a movie on two separate occasions, Jean Grey has long been one of the ideal hosts of the Phoenix Force, a fiery power that's one of the oldest in the Marvel Universe. This incredible force is capable of healing any injury that Jean receives, and is even capable of resurrecting her entirely if she's killed by unnatural means. Combined with her natural mutant abilities already making her one of the most powerful telepaths in the entire Marvel Universe, potentially rivaling even those of Professor X, and Jean Grey will be one of the most important mutants for many, many ages to come. Number 7. Yep, Superman's immortal. At least, as long as he isn't killed. Although, let's be real, that hasn't stopped him yet either. Action Comics 1000 depicted a story of Superman bidding farewell to the Earth, and more specifically, his parents, shortly before it would be consumed by the sun, confirming that Superman could not die of natural causes. But also, in a sweet moment, we witness Clark question life, even now that he's billions of years old. We see him question what it was all for and why he keeps coming back. We already know Superman is strong, but that goes without saying. But even with everything he's experienced over the length of his incredibly long life, we see that the true strength of Superman is in his considerate nature and the strength of his heart, even in the last moments of the Earth. Coming in at number 6, we have the Incredible Hulk, aka Bruce Banner. Considering the Hulk's most popular and critically acclaimed series of the last decade was literally called The Immortal Hulk, obviously the big green guy earns a spot on this list. Built around the twist that the Incredible Hulk has always been immortal and that Bruce Banner first died during the original Gamma Bomb explosion and has been constantly resurrecting ever since, this series took the Hulk into a wild new body horror direction with all gamma-powered beings apparently being connected to the one below all in a way that allows them to circumvent even the natural process of death, the Hulk is apparently a problem that can never be permanently solved. Number 5. Wonder Woman Wonder Woman is still a woman that can be killed, but she has also been known as a demigod in the comics before, with one origin for her making her the daughter of Hippolyta, the queen of Amazons, and Zeus, a god of Olympus. Really, the god of Olympus. More recently, during the events of Dark Knight's death metal, Diana was also raised up to become an omnipotent god amidst the stars, transcended into an otherworldly being 
and leaving our earthly plane behind. At least for a while. Diana would get a glimpse into a potential future, giving us the future state line, world, and event. Wonder Woman is known for being one of the fiercest and strongest fighters amongst the Amazons and in the world of DC besides. Coming in at number 4, we have Thor Odinson, the God of Thunder. While several Marvel and DC superheroes have godlike powers, Thor is one of the very few that counts as a literal god. Having protected both Midgard and Asgard for thousands upon thousands of years, Thor has already had eons worth of adventures by the time we were introduced to the character in the comics. And according to all the storylines that feature an older All-Father Thor, he'll continue to outlive the rest of the Avengers by thousands and thousands of years more. With even the Norse apocalypse of Ragnarok focusing on the concept of renewal and rebirth, Thor is a heroic god that will likely never truly see a permanent end. Number three. Yep, Dr. Manhattan couldn't be missed on this list. He's insanely powerful, seemingly impossible to harm, and can restore his body when disintegrated and be just fine. He doesn't breathe, he doesn't eat, he doesn't sleep, and just to top it all off, he's immortal. He's basically one of the most powerful beings in the DC Universe. As far as being a hero goes, however, he's always kind of towed the line. As far as immortals go, he's similar to Phantom Stranger in that he seems to be disconnected from humanity and only intervenes when he feels it's necessary. So given his power levels and immortal status, and that god attitude, he's on the list. Coming in at number two, we have the one and only Superman. Perhaps the most iconic superhero of all time, Superman is also where giant death of a hero events hit their peak, with the huge 90s cultural moment of the death of Superman. After a grueling multi-issue battle through the streets of Metropolis that saw Superman giving up his life to defeat the unstoppable killer Doomsday, it appeared that the Man of Steel was dead for good. However, after a long storyline that saw multiple imposter supermen show up, Superman was shown to have not truly died, but merely been placed in Kryptonian stasis until he was able to be healed enough to resume being a superhero. Even after the beating of a lifetime from a complete monster, Superman remained unstoppable and has remained unkillable to this day. And finally, coming in at our top spot, we have the Venom symbiote. In a potential alternate future seen in the one-off story called Venom, The End, it was revealed that the most famous symbiote in the Marvel Universe has a longer shelf life than you'd expect. Keeping his host, Eddie Brock, alive for hundreds of years past a normal human lifespan, this story explores the symbiote finally letting go of its oldest friend and becoming the sole organic being left in a universe slowly dying to an artificial intelligence plague known as the God Mind. The symbiote wound up being the very last living thing before the universe was reset, showing that the most immortal creature in the Marvel Universe might just be a pile of black goo. No offense, Venom. And at 10, Painkiller Jane. First appearing in 22 Brides number 1, Painkiller Jane is an event comic character created for a 5 issue miniseries, but then went on to cross over with characters like the Punisher and Hellboy. Jane Vasco started out as an undercover cop trying to infiltrate the mob. After gaining the trust of the mob boss, she is sent to meet a rival gang member to pass on a message, but unbeknownst to her, they planted a bomb on her, blowing it up as soon as she meets the member. He somehow survives and is able to revive her, while also giving her the superhuman ability to regenerate in the process. She she then decides to leave her life as a cop behind, becoming the vigilante painkiller Jane. While this may be the origin listed on most websites, a different origin was presented in the first Painkiller Jane miniseries, and the Dynamite Comics miniseries contains references to both versions. Her powers make her indestructible, being able to heal wounds in less than a minute. She has recovered from gunshots, explosions, chemical weapons, axes to the spine, and even a shotgun to the face. And if that's not the description of immortality, I don't know what is. Number 9, Franklin Richards, the son of Reed Richards and Sue Storm Richards of the Fantastic Four. Franklin possesses a terrifying Omega level power set that has only grown over the years. Franklin first appeared in Fantastic Four Annual Number 6 back in 1968 and only just became a teenager. Happy birthday. Now Franklin's immortality is implied because while you'd have to jump through some hoops to explain it via his power set, but he has been placed on the same level as the Celestials and depicted as one of the last beings alive at the end of the universe, just chilling with Galactus. 
The cosmic set have already taken notice of Franklin, because he can essentially do anything. Because of this, he is a very desired player on all sides, because he's also so dangerous. Hence why in canon at the time of this recording, the mutant separatist movement wants him on their side, and not allied with his human meta-powered parents. Or mutate powered. He has been shown in certain future timelines to be able to kill Celestials. So in short, Franklin Richards is one to sit up and take notice of. It almost makes his superhero name Powerhouse sound cool. Almost. And it ain't Deadpool. Deadpool is one hell of a disease. And I mean that as in you'll never truly be rid of him. He's like an STI. Sure your symptoms may go down and you won't be able to spread it, but it will flare up again every once in a while. First appearing in the New Mutants number 98, Wade Winston Wilson is meant to be a parody of Slade Wilson, and they do this in the best way. The wisecracking, death-loving merc with a mouth is able to, like Painkiller Jane, restore any wound within a matter of seconds, or longer if it's a whole appendage, like a hand. This ability also depends on his mental state. If he's happy, awake, and alert, it works at its best. His healing factor is strong enough that he has survived complete incineration and decapitation. And even his head was able to be its own person as Headpool. He was able to regrow his head as well after it was pulverized by the Hulk in Deadpool Kills the Universe, a graphic novel. If you can do that, where can I sign up? I can look like an avocado had sex with an older, more disgusting avocado on a topographical map of Utah. Number 7, Icarus. I would be remiss if I didn't at least mention one Eternal on this list. Eternals are known for their immortality. I mean, it's kinda in the name. Eternal. We call them eternal because they are. They have lived on Earth for 1 million years at this point or more, Icarus included. They are beings who were created by the Celestials, but whose purpose remained a great mystery in the comics for a long time. Initially though, it seemed that the Celestials had created them to kind of be Earth's heroes, but also because they kind of enjoyed messing with species on other worlds. Which was exactly what they were doing with humanity when they created both the Eternals and their initial sworn enemies, the Deviants. Icarus, like himself, is often thought of as being the Superman equivalent of the group. Icarus is well known for his durability, strength, flight, and energy manipulation, and energy beams, including heat vision as a form of. Icarus is strong enough to take on Thanos one on one, and also possesses the ability to heal himself. Like other Eternals, he also has the capability to teleport, though he actually prefers not to do that, and he possesses low level psionic abilities that allow him to communicate telepathically, as well as more advanced telekinetic abilities. And it's six Ghost Rider. First appearing in Marvel Spotlight number 5, Johnny Blaze agrees to give his soul to the devil in order to save his father's life. The result of this is, at night, when he is around evil, his flesh becomes surrounded in hellfire and his head becomes a fiery skull. He rides a fiery motorcycle as well and can launch blasts of hellfire from his typically skeletal hands. There have been many incarnations of the Ghost Rider over the years. Johnny Blaze, Noble Kale, Denny Ketch, Alejandro Jones, and Robbie Reyes to name a few. And while being able to get shot, stabbed, or whacked and not feel anything can contribute to immortality, the fact that there will never not be a Ghost Rider serves as more of a way to secure immortality. I almost included Oliver Queen on the list because of what happened during the CW Crisis crossover, but I figured I'd not include characters based on what happened on TV, I'd just do comics. Number 5. Venom When it comes to scary comic book characters, Venom is definitely one of the first a lot of people think of. I know we gave me nightmares as a kid, although I also had a talking toy of him which was my favorite represent. Venom is freaky not only for his terrifying appearance, but also because the idea of having an alien symbiote latch onto me and control me sounds awful. However, the most terrifying thing about Venom is talking about him slash it slash them. Am I talking about the symbiote? The combination of them? Which version of the combination? Who's with the symbiote? Which of the dozen retcons are we referring to? And how many people will yell at me in the comments if I get it wrong? Seriously? It's a nightmare. In terms of immortality, we haven't really seen a symbiote latch onto a host for long enough to know if they're immortal that way, but the symbiotes themselves are believed to be, so I think that counts. See? Confusing. And at 4, Superman. First seen in Action Comics number 1, Superman has technically died before. But in the universe of comics, death is never really a true threat. The death of Superman storyline began in 1992 and lasted until late 1993, where it shocked fans to think that Superman was truly dead and that there was no returning. However, this is often cited as the event that sparked the whole nobody ever really dies in comic books theme, where no matter who dies, they will bring him back within the next few issues. While also being bulletproof and super strong, he can fly, has heat vision, 
vision and frost breath and can basically do whatever he wants with no consequences. Yes, while it may be possible to kill him like they have in the past, Superman is considered the poster boy of comic books and referred to as the first superhero by many. This is technically untrue because others like Zoro predate him and fit the same bill as Superman, but whatever. You can't kill the literal face of comics, especially when we have events like Blackest Night which bring back characters who even their creators forgot about. Number three, Thor. Thor is meant to be immortal as he is a god from Asgard, but Thor keeps dying. Now, he is meant to be extremely long lived, but for all intents and purposes, immortal. However, Thor has been killed on more than one occasion, most recently by Captain Marvel. Carol Danvers. Thor's deaths are unique as well, for they play on his mythological origins. So instead of just vanishing, he goes to Valhalla or other realms and can continue to have adventures there. So there is the idea that even if he's gone, he's not fully gone and people know where to go get him. And at 2, Wolverine. This wannabe honey badger has slowly had his healing factor amped up over time. He used to take days to recover from a severe beating, as seen in the classic X-Men in Australia storyline in the 90s. But now you can drop an atom bomb on him and he can just get right back up. In fact, it was revealed that every time Wolverine dies, he goes to like this hellish world where he has to fight a demon samurai for the right to return to life. Yeah, I don't get it either. Wolverine has also managed to regenerate his entire body from a single drop of blood after it landed on the crystal of Ultimate Vision in Uncanny X Men Volume 1, Annual Number 11 in 1987. This also gave him incredible cosmic powers, which he abandoned and instead destroyed the crystal, killing Horde who was trying to take it for himself. Why would you do that? Which is pretty cool and one of the dopest things I've seen come from comics. But again, why would you do that? Just tear him apart. God. Finally, in at number one, Mr. Immortal. How can I not finish this list off of the guy whose name is literally Immortal? First appearing in West Coast Avengers Volume 2, number 46 in 1989, Craig Hollis was visited by the entity known as Death Urge shortly after his birth and the death of his mother. This entity started urging Craig to do dangerous things, while his father thinks it's just an imaginary friend. Eventually, as Craig calls him Dirge, convinces Craig to set his house on fire and hide beneath it. This event kills his father and Dirge leaves. He gets put in foster care with an abusive father, but grows closer to his foster sister. They fall in love, but is torn away when she offs herself. This causes Dirge to come back, and Craig asks him to kill him as well so that he can be with her. Dirge refuses, because he's just a dick. But this doesn't stop Craig, who tried to fulfill his wish by jumping off a building, only to realize he can't die. He uses his ability to become a superhero, and as his first outing as Mr. Immortal, he's shot and left for dead. He decided he needed a team to make better use of his abilities, so after putting an ad out on Craigslist, he founds the Great Lake Avengers. A superhero who can't die but wants to? That sounds pretty interesting to me. Number 10, Frank. Yep. Frank. Okay, fine. You may know him better as Frankenstein's monster. You know the beginning of Frank's story, created by Victor Frankenstein, or Frankenstein if you prefer, the monster eventually found himself frozen in ice, being thawed a century later. After falling in with some rough crowds, he would eventually go on to join various monster hunting teams, including the Fearsome Four and later the all-new Howling Commandos, after being recruited by Agent Coulson. Since he's kind of already dead, he can't really die, and since his cells aren't alive, he's even immune to disease. And I mean, considering he's the star of one of the greatest horror franchises in the world, I'd say he's pretty scary. Number 9. Nightcrawler Nightcrawler definitely isn't what most people think of when they think scary superhero, but he was on my mind since I just did an alternate versions list for him. A link down below, maybe? That said, he's definitely one of the freakiest looking heroes out there, largely because of his demonic heritage. Now look, I'm no bigot, but the dude definitely looks like a demon, which is fine in comic books, but if I ran into him in a dark alley, I would not be pleased, especially if he suddenly teleported behind me. He also ticks the immortal box, since he already died and had to sacrifice his soul to come back to life, which sounds kind of selfish, but it was actually for the greater good. Eh, long story. Number 8, Dead Man. Boston Brand was a circus acrobat, but after being murdered, he made a deal with Ramakushna, a Hindu goddess, to give him powers to find his murderer. But he's a decent guy, so if he sees someone being bad while he's finding the murderer, he stops them by possessing people. This led to him working with various super teams, including Justice Society International. And I gotta say, this was a pretty easy choice, since Deadman is a spooky, spooky ghost, which instantly gives him both immortality cred and scary cred. Hmm, making my job easy. Another nice thing is that he looks a lot more villainous than most heroes, which also means he looks pretty darn scary. Sometimes. Other times he's a bit goofy, but we won't talk about those times. He's scary, he's immortal, he's on the list. And it's Seven Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. I am Groot. Okay, I'm not actually gonna do that the whole time. And now I've also realized that the editor 
can put whatever they want over me saying that. Oh no. First appearing in Tales to Astonish number 13 in 1960, Groot is essentially a tree. He is a floral colossus from planet X. These beings are tree-like humanoids whose language can only be understood by listening to the stiffness of their larynx and the breaths in between each sentence. Which is one of the most creative things that we've seen done with a language. Sure, you can't speak it like Dothraki, but it's still pretty cool. Groot originally came to Earth to capture and study humans, but was destroyed by termites used by Leslie Evans. Zemnu made a duplicate of Groot by combining a human and a tree so it could fight Hulk, but that was destroyed as well. In the MCU, Groot sacrificed himself in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie saying we are Groot rather than I am Groot, but then was brought back using a leftover twig, which sprouted into baby Groot and more recently teen Groot. This guy has died and come back more times than me, so I'd say that's pretty damn impressive. I've come back a total of zero times, I think. I might have died once. I don't know. Number 6. Ghost Rider I think we all knew Ghost Rider would be on here. I doubt I need to really explain why he's scary, but in case you're totally lost, he's a biker with a flaming skull and demon chains who can consume souls and cause you to feel every bit of pain you've ever inflicted on someone. So uh, yeah, probably not great to run into in a dark alley, especially if you're a jerk. In terms of immortality, it's stated in Ghost Rider's Heavens on Fire number 6 that only God can destroy a Ghost Rider since he created them. True, the concept of God in the Marvel Universe is a bit shaky, so this might not be meant to be taken literally, but I think it's fairly safe to call them immortal. Number 5. Iron Man, going for a more unconventional form of immortality with Tony Stark. Now Tony is very frail, even by human standards. For a time he needed to be in his Iron Man suit just to survive. And despite all the enhancements he built into his suits, at one point fusing them to him permanently with nanites, he was still brutally killed by his friend Captain Marvel Carol Danvers. This was during Civil War II, and it was because he didn't want to arrest people before they did crimes. However, Tony did not die. No, he managed to AI himself, and then build a new body, which has led to an interesting arc in his 2018 run about AI rights. You know, like those Voyager episodes. So Tony can be immortal, since he has found a way to transfer his consciousness into a digitized format, and hence make himself downloadable into robot bodies. However, every now and again, he must contend with the idea of, is he real? Does he have a soul? Are we just supposed to pretend he's real, Tony, and forget Civil War II happened? Probably. Number four, Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing is definitely among the lesser known superheroes on this list. Some people may not even be aware that he's a good guy since characters based on horror tropes tend to be pretty evil. But hey, as we learned with Frank, you mustn't judge a book by its cover, even if it is a pretty scary cover. Swamp Thing came into being when scientist Alec Holland had an incident with his bio-restorative formula, causing his consciousness to enter a nearby swamp. This consciousness was then able to enter any plant life, and use it as a body of sorts. Despite its horrid appearance, Swamp Thing would go on to find love and fight to protect humanity and nature. And yes, the Swamp Thing is immortal. As long as there is plant life somewhere in the universe, there's somewhere for Swamp Thing's consciousness to live. It's like he has like eight gazillion horcruxes, except he doesn't have to split his soul. Not too shabby. And a three Green Lantern. Whenever a Green Lantern dies, another creature worthy of a ring gets chosen. There is no way to ever really eradicate any Lantern core from existence, since the rings will just, you know, straight up go find a new host. There have also been plenty of Green Lanterns explored in the comics. Alan Scott, Hal Jordan, Jon Stewart, Jessica Cruz, John Diggle, plenty of men and women and aliens have gotten their hands on a green ring of power. But what if we were to wipe out every single lantern at once? Like a bomb that is able to get them all since they were like at a con or something. Well if one ring managed to survive it would still find another host, so you'd have to destroy the rings as well. But unless you can literally do all of this at once, you'd be screwed. Because then they come for you because you just literally killed everyone. Number 2. Spawn The thing with this list is that most superheroes look, well, heroic which generally means they don't look very scary. Not so with Spawn. Al Simmons was a cop who was murdered and sent to hell only to make a deal with Malabolgia to become a hell spawn in exchange for seeing his wife one last time. And he's pretty darn cool. Sure, the 97 version looked a bit more like a WWE character than Demon Spawn, but if you want any proof that he's a scary dude, check out the trailer for the 2020 reboot, because my goodness, he terrifying. In terms of immortality, Spawn won't die of old age, and generally won't die of anything, unless beheaded by a weapon of heaven. Or if you manage to kill him in the Dead Zone, an alley on Earth that counts as heaven's domain, so like, you should probably avoid that alley, or you'll get murdered by homeless men again. True story. Number 1. Deadpool 
That's right, nerds. I don't care that I've talked about him a million times on this channel. If you give me an opportunity to slap Deadpool onto a list, I'm slapping him onto the list. For the three people who somehow don't know by now, Wade Wilson is a wisecracking mercenary who, through an experimental treatment, gained absurd regenerative abilities, to the point where he basically can't die. And why is he scary? Well, because his skin looks like this. Yeah, those are tumors. You're welcome. Plus, he isn't exactly the most stable person, so you kinda gotta watch your back even if he is your friend. As you may have guessed, he's my favorite hero of all time, and I am absurdly excited for him to join the MCU. Just please, for the love of God, bring back Hugh Jackman for one more movie! It needs to happen. Please. Number 10, Yara Floor. Yara Floor is destined to become the new Wonder Woman. At least that is what Future State would have us believe. For now though, in the Prime Earth continuity, she is just coming into her own and being introduced to us as a hero, figuring out as well what that means for her as our Wonder Girl. Yara herself, like Wonder Woman before her, is also a demigod. In Future State we learn that while her mother was a mortal woman, her father was a Brazilian river god. Yara is an Amazonian in two ways, being from the Amazon and also being an Amazon. Amazon of the Amazons. She is not from Themyscira like Diana, but instead from the Amazonian rainforest. We've seen the potential of Yara via her appearance in Future State, but currently she is not at her full power levels just yet, as she doesn't have the same amount of experience as her future self. Like Diana, she is also a skilled combatant and has enhanced strength and speed due to her heritage. Number 9, Beta Ray Bill. Beta Ray Bill isn't someone you'd initially think of when you think of Immortal, but he is down with the Immortals of Asgard, and so I think we can include him too. Also, add in the fact that he is a cyborg, and you have a Beta Ray Bill that just won't quit, in most cases at least. In his Thor form, Beta Ray Bill becomes one of the toughest heroes around, not only known for his strength, but also his durability. He is immune to disease and sickness, and becomes pretty much immortal in that form. Being at the level of strength and capability when it comes to his his power levels also makes him one of the most powerful heroes in the Marvel Universe, even though he might not be the one that you think of first. Still, I'm really happy I put Beta Ray Bill on this list because I feel like we never talk about him enough. Poor Bill. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list, I have a lot more immortal, powerful heroes that I want to tell you about. So be sure to let us know you are loving it by giving this video a thumbs up. And shout out in the comments. Be like, part two, part two. Maybe we'll do a part two. Number 8, Orion. Orion is one of the new gods and also the son of Darkseid. But just because his dad is one of the greatest villains of all time when it comes to the DC universe doesn't mean that he can't be a hero, which is ultimately what Orion is, preferring to fight on the side of good. Although this doesn't mean that he never has conflicts with other superheroes in the DC universe, because that does happen from time to time, with Orion arguing that his approach to heroism in certain cases is superior. Orion is an amazingly skilled fighter and leader who is known for his super strength, durability, and stamina. He also is immortal like his father, and because Darkseid has also been established as a constant in the DC universe, therefore invulnerable from ever being permanently defeated, we can discern that Orion likely has a similar thing going on. Being descended from Darkseid as he is. Next, number 7, the Immortal Hulk. Yeah, Hulk in general is pretty scary and pretty immortal, but Immortal Hulk is even scarier and even uh, immortal. Er, not only does he have a healing factor keeping him young and strapping, but the whole point of the character is that this Hulk keeps bringing Banner back to life whenever he dies. So like yeah, that's pretty darn immortal. Immortal Hulk, unlike other modern versions, only comes out in the evening if Bruce Banner is injured or dead. And apparently, Immortal Hulk is the most powerful one yet. So not only does he look terrifying, but he's also even stronger than previous incarnations. Plus, as I said, he only comes out at night, and we all know nighttime is super spooky. Number 6, Supergirl. Like her cousin Kal-El, Supergirl is often perceived as being basically immortal. In Future State, we saw an alternate future where Kara left Earth and lived well into the future. At the end of her Future State limited series, Kara zor Superwoman, Supergirl did inevitably die, but we don't really know what from. It could have eventually been that she succumbed to old age after living well into the future and beyond, or it could be that she died protecting the eternal garden and community there that she created and had fostered. I would err on the side of the latter just because of how immortal Kara already seemed in that series. And that's not the only alternate reality where we've seen Kryptonians living well into the future, virtually untouched by age. There have been countless other realities, including 
including that of DC 1 million, where we've seen heroes like Superman live well beyond normal years, becoming basically a sun powered god. So if this is true for Clark based on his physiology, it must also be a possibility for Kara as well. And to 5 Dr. Fate. First appearing in More Fun Comics number 55, his origins and alter ego were not shown until More Fun Comics number 67, where it was revealed that Kent Nelson and his father went on an expedition to the Valley of Ur. While exploring, Kent's father finds a temple. They explore it further, and Kent opens the tomb of Naboo the Wise, reviving him from suspended animation and releasing a poisonous gas that kills his father. Taking pity on Kent, Naboo spends the next 20 years teaching him the ways of the sorcerer, giving him a mystical helmet, amulet, and cloak when he completes his training. Just like Ghost Rider, there have been many different people taking on the Doctor Fate title. Kent Nelson, Jared Stevens, Hector Hall, and Khaled Nasur, just to name a few. And gaining the powers of a freaking sorcerer is literally one of the coolest things that can ever happen. But the persona of Dr. Fate will always live on, always finding someone new to wear the helmet and use the title. So while the characters that wear the helmet may pass and change, the mantle of Dr. Fate will always have a home, which is really Curie Mord out. Wow, words. Number four, Cersei. Probably one of the most powerful Eternals around, and definitely one of the few with the greatest staying power in the comics, is Cersei. So she is not only immortal as an Eternal, but also immortal in terms of her appearance in the comics. Cersei is introduced to us as one of the members of the Eternals who most loves humanity in the MCU film, Eternals. And the same can be said for her in the comics. There, she is also known as one of the most sociable Eternals, who also appreciates a really good party. In fact, when she was tricked into believing she was human, this was kind of what her whole world centered around. She became like all about parties. When it comes to her power levels, Cersei is often seen as specializing in the power of transmutation. In the comics, this has never been restricted to non-organic matter either, and also gives Cersei the power to heal. As an Eternal, she not only possesses this power, but also has complete control over every molecule of her being, making her quite durable and quite hard to kill. Even when Eternals are killed as well, they are resurrected, meaning they can never really die. Not only that, but Cersei can fly, teleport, and has super strength, and is telepathic and telekinetic. She's really got a lot of powers. <laughs> like most Eternals. That is something that I feel like we didn't really see in the movie, but in the comics, they're all pretty OP. Number 3. Lobo Lobo is a big, strong, loud, arrogant, violent blowhard from the planet Zarnia. He's also, full disclosure, one of my favorite characters, so I'm a wee bit biased here. That said, he definitely fits the criteria. Immortal? Check. He's such a wacko that he was straight up banished from the afterlife. Scary? Check. Freaky looks aside, his name translates to He who devours your entrails and thoroughly enjoys it. And the main man lives up to that name, having exterminated almost everyone on his home planet, including children with flying scorpions. Yeah. Lobo was created as a parody of all the 90s comic books that were hell-bent on being super gritty and dark and intense, and he is definitely all of those things with a tongue planted firmly in one's cheek. Number two, Jean Grey. Jean has died a lot, and I mean a lot, and yet she always comes back. If that isn't immortality, I do not know what is. Even when she has been dead for years, she still returns. A big part of what makes her so indestructible is how much the Phoenix Force loves her and often sees her as its preferred host. I guess except for the whole Phoenix tournament thing. That that really threw my whole understanding of the Jean Phoenix connection for a loop. As a superhero, Jean is one of the most powerful around, but often chooses to show restraint when it comes to her abilities, unless she is really needed to set things right. She's just kind of too OP as well. She is an Omega level telepath and an extremely powerful telekinetic. Number 1. Superman One of the most immortal of the immortals out there and one of the most powerful is Superman, who has been established as immortal as long as he's under a yellow sun. Granted, his immortality is a little bit conditional, but when it comes to being a powerhouse, Superman is undisputedly one of the best and most established in comics today. I mean, they kind of had to nail down his powers and give him weaknesses to make his struggles more grounded. That's how unstoppable he initially was, back when his superpowers were basically whatever he needed them to be in order to save the day and solve problems. Superman has also died before, but has pretty much always come back, and following the death of Superman, we also learned that due to Kryptonian technology, even this publicized and sensationalized death would most definitely not be a permanent thing. A very powerful factor that Superman also possesses when it comes to his immortality is how popular he is. Evidently. So it'd be really hard to kill Superman because we'd all be like, no! No one would accept it. We'd all be like, just tearing our hair out and beating our chest, be like, unacceptable. 